we have a particle that's moving along this curve. And usually when you're given the equation, this right here shouldn't be too bad, right? And then it says, as it reaches the point 3, negative 2, the y-coordinate is decreasing at a rate of 0 0.9 centimeters per second. How fast is the x-coordinate of the point changing at this instant? So this is how I like to do related rate questions, especially how I like to teach students how to think through related rates. The key is draw two points, uh, draw two pictures. First, this is given, so you know we will be looking at the hyperbola and because we have x squared minus y squared, so this is the open left and right hyperbola. So it looks like this, and then we're just going to focus on the right hand side, right? And of course you have the other one, I just want to put that down just in case. Yeah. People say, hey, where's the left one? You have a particle, and this is a typical question, so it's going to be moving along the hyperbola. So maybe it's right here, right? It's going to be moving around. You don't know um, where it's going to move. But it says, and this is where the second picture is coming. It will reach the point 3, negative 2. So this right here is 3, and this right here is negative 2. Let's go ahead and think about it. You see, the particle is moving, right? And it's going to be moving from here to here. And how do we know? Because it says the y coordinate is decreasing. So the point's moving down. That's why the second picture looks like this. Here are two important words that you can possibly use to help you tremendously for related rates actually for all the word problems. The first word is no. First, we know this equation, of course, so we're, we are just going to put that down. We know x squared minus y squared is equal to 5. This is the equation that we are going to focus on. And it also says the y coordinate is decreasing. So when you see that, you know that's going to be dy dx because that is a rate. It's decreasing at a rate of 0 0.9 centimeters per second. So we also know that dy dt equals negative 0 0.9. And when you write this down, don't bother to put on the units. Usually the units are the same, so you don't have to do any unit conversions. Unless some evil questions, they will say centimeters per second, and then the other rate is like you know two feet per second or so. That's bad. So we know this, and we know this. I think that's pretty much all we know. And this is what we want to know. It says we would like to know how fast is the x coordinate changing. So you see, let me just do it again like this. So you can see that the point is going down, right? Going downward and it's actually moving to the right, right? And because we want to find out the how fast, right, the rate of the x coordinate, how fast it's changing, that's what we want to know. dx dt is equal to what? And Here's another thing you have to know. At the instance that we are at that point, which is 3, negative 2. And of course, this is the x value and this is the y value. So this is pretty much it. That will be my summary for this question. And now we have the equation already. So this is like an angel question, you know, because we can just go ahead, look at this equation. Keep in mind that x and y are changing. So we are going to differentiate this with respect to t. And because of that, the first one we will get 2x dx dt because x is changing and for the second one we're just going to differentiate that so do the usual power rule you get 2y dy dt differentiating 5 is the happiest thing in the world because you get 0 and now you can just plug in the values that we know this is 2 x is 3 dx dt is we don't know that's what we want to know so dx dt minus 2, the y value, I should put down negative 2, and then the dy dt should be this, which is negative 0 0.9, and then that's equal to 0. All right, so now I'm going to move this to the other side and divide both sides by 2 and 3, so you will see that dx dt is equal to, this will become positive, 2 times negative 2 times negative 0 0.9, and then divided by this and that, which is 2 and 3, and do it whichever way that you would like. I will tell you this right here is equal to, it's going to be positive and we will get 0 0.6. And finally, when you want to box the answer or whatsoever, notice that this is positive because in fact, we are moving toward the right. So that's why it's the positive direction. And then we have the positive rate. And this right here is centimeters per second. So 
usually just attach the unit at the final end. This is how I like to tell the students that how to do it. So number two, it says we have water is going to a conical tank at the rate of nine feet cube per minute. The tank stands pointing down and has the height of 15 feet and the base radius is five feet. So this is the typical cone question and then the water going into the cone. So here is your tank. So it's the typical cone, all right? And then we also know the measurement. So let's go ahead and put that down. Right here, the height is 15 feet. Again, just ignore the unit for now. I know for the physics teachers, I'm sorry, because I said that before in my video and then some physics teacher, they didn't like me to say that, but like, the point is, it's cleaner and just make sure that this is 15 feet and the radius right here is five feet. They have the same unit, so just ignore the unit for a little bit. And then you have water that's coming in. Of course, water should be in blue. So just imagine that you have the water coming in and then it's going to be fill in, right? So maybe this is going to be the water level right here. I don't know, right? And of course, actually, let me just put down the first picture. Maybe the water level is only right here. So water coming in and you know, after a while, the water level is going to be increased. So here's the second picture, but the water level is going to be higher because you have the water coming in. Sometimes you may see the question that's like water is like draining out. So in that case, the water level will decrease. So when you're taking notes, when, when you're thinking through the questions, draw two pictures that will be really helpful. Let's put down what we know and let's identify what we want to know. Well, let's go ahead and write that down right here. What do we know? We are talking about water tank and this is a cone, upside down steel cone. You have to remember the formula for the volume of the cone. We know that, you have to remember this, the volume is equal to one third pi r square h. All right, so this is the formula based on the shape that we are doing. Hmm, what else do we know? Let's see, the water is coming in at the rate of nine feet cube per minute. We know that dv dt is equal to nine. So in this case, the v is actually for the volume of the water. We would like to know, how fast is the water rising, right? How fast is the water rising? So in this case, you can see that if you look at the water, of course, this right here, this radius and this height, they will change. Once you have more water, you see the radius is getting bigger. Likewise, the height is also getting bigger as well. If they are changing, go ahead and write down variables. So this is the R and this is the H. So again, this right here is technically for the volume of the water, but again, it's in the cone, so that's why it's the volume of the cone. We want to know what's dH, dt. How fast is the water rising? At what instance? At the instance when the water is six feet deep. So we need to know this when h is equal to six. So this is going to be the summary. Maybe we can do what we did earlier. Just look at this and differentiate that. And you have to keep in mind R is a function of time. Likewise, H is also a function of time because they change. You can do that, but the problem is that, you see, this right here will require product rule because both the R and H, they are functions of time. So you can do it like that, use the product rule and just make sure you do the implicit differentiation well enough. But you don't have to do it like this. Because if you look at this, we can actually get rid of one variable by using similar triangle. And that's the typical way to do these kind of questions. Even though it's totally okay to get dr dt and also dh dt and find out the relationship, but that one might be slightly overkill. So let's do the typical way. Similar triangle. So you see that this is 15. This, of course, in the middle right here, it will also be 15, right? So let's do R over H. And this will be equal to 5 over 15, which is, of course, one third. And now notice we just care about the H dt, so we don't want R. That means we should solve for R right here. We can just multiply the H on both sides. This means, let me just say, this means 
R is equal to 1 third times H. So this right here is the relation between R and H. Check this out. We are going to write this formula as 1 third times pi times the R, which is 1 third H, and then square that, and then H. All right, much better, because now we just have one variable. Pi is not a variable, it's just a constant, by the way. Anyway, this is 1 over 9, times that is 1 over 27, and then we have the pi, and then this is h squared times h, which is h cubed. So this is the volume formula in terms of just h for this call. Now, we can do our favorite thing. Namely, we are going to look at this and differentiate this with respect to time. And as you can see right here, we get the v dt. Ah, very nice. And then, bring the power to the front, and then minus 1, so this becomes 1 over 9. Pi is just a constant, you keep it, and then this becomes h squared. And remember, h is a function of time because it changes over time. So here, you multiply by dh dt. And that's exactly what we are trying to look for. Now, plugging numbers, 9 here. This is 1 over 9, pi is pi, h is 6. You have to also pay attention to at what instance, because at different instance, the rate will be different. So h is 6, and you square that, and then you have the dh dt. All right, ladies and gentlemen, dh dt is equal to, I'm going to multiply 9 on both sides, so it becomes 81. And I'm going to divide pi, and then divide 36. So I'm going to write it as 6 squared, yeah. All right, so all that. And if you use a calculator, you will get approximately 0 0.716. Final unit is feet per minute, because this is the distance, right? H is the distance. So the unit is feet, and then because this is a rate, so the unit for this number is feet per minute, and you see this is positive, because the h is getting bigger and bigger. Number three. You know we are going to do a question that involves the Pythagorean theorem, and this is the one. Okay, we have car A is traveling west at 50 miles per hour, and car B is traveling north at 60 miles per hour. They are heading to the same intersection. At what rate are the cars approaching each other when car A is 0.3 miles and car B is 0.4 miles from the intersection? Of course, I'll show you guys two pictures. First one, of course, we have the intersection. So let's just put it down like so. Two cars, A and B. So I'm just going to say that this right here is car A, so this is car B, car A is going here, and then car B is going there, and then you cannot really see the wheel if you are looking like, well, both of them will be toward the intersection, so car will be a little bit closer. All right, let's put down what we know. Two cars, and then this right here is 90 degrees, and the question is asking how fast is the cars approaching each other? In that case, that's a straight line distance. The equation that we're going to use is actually just this. You see, from here to here, we'll call that to be A, because here we have car A already, and then from here to here is car B, and we also need to care about the distance between them, straight line distance. And you can see that all three lengths, and they are getting smaller and smaller. So this is A, this is B, right? So let me just put that down right here maybe. This is A, this is B. Let's put that down as C. Doesn't really matter. You can use Z if you would like, but why? Length. No angles are being involved, so we are just going to use a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. And keep in mind that a, b, and c, they are all changing, so they are all functions of time. Now, let's go ahead and put down what we know. It says car a is traveling 50 miles per hour, so we know that the a dt is equal to 50. But here's the deal. You can see that the distance right here is getting shorter and shorter, right? So technically, this right here would be a negative 50, right? You just really have to look at the pictures, and if the quantity is getting bigger and bigger, then the rate is positive. But if the quantity is getting smaller and smaller, in this, distance, in this case, the distance is getting smaller and smaller, then in that case, the rate is negative. 
Similarly, the BDT, this is 60 miles per hour, so it will be negative 60. And this is important because sometimes you will see the question that car A is going toward the intersection, but car B is going away from the intersection. In that case, the sign really, really matters. If you have a wrong sign, then the number will, of course, totally be different. So we know this is the equation that we're going to use, and we know these are the rates that we have. And what do we want to know? The distance between car A and car B, so that's just going to be dc dt. We need to know what this is at the instance that A is 0 0.3 miles away from the intersection and B is 0 0.4 away from the intersection. So that's the summary for all this right here. And now, of course, we have the equation already, thanks to the Pythagorean theorem. So we can just go ahead and differentiate this with respect to time. Here we go. A is a function of time, so the derivative of that is 2a dA dt. Similarly, next we get 2b dB dt. And lastly here is 2c dC dt. And we can just plug in numbers and then see what happens. 2 is 2, and then a is negative, sorry, a is 0 0.3, and then dA dt is negative 50, and then 2 is 2, and then b is 0 0.4, and then dB dt is negative 60. That's about the same as earlier, huh? But I'm going to make this fit. C is, well, C is what? Well, now we have to solve for C. a is 0 0.3. B is 0 0.4. C, of course, we can use the Pythagorean theorem right here. So we get, let me just show you the work. 0 0.3 square plus 0 0.4 square. This right here will give you C square, right? So you can solve this, you will get C is equal to 0 0.5. Right? So C is actually 0 0.5. And lastly, we have the C D T there, right? You see, 2 times 0 0.5 is what? It's just equal to 1. So in fact, dc dt, because this is just 1, right? So it's just going to be all that. So I'm just going to write down 2 times 0 0.3 times negative 50 plus 2 times 0 0.4 times negative 60. Do all the work on your own, and then you will end up with negative 78. Right? Negative 78. And now, why is this answer negative? Well, because as you can see, C is getting shorter and shorter as well, right? So that's why it's negative. And the question is asking, at what rate are the cars approaching each other? So the word approaching tells you the distance are getting smaller and smaller. So that has a negative already, right? So I will just write this down in a sentence. I will just say the cars are approaching each other at 78 and the distance, I mean the unit right here is miles per hour. So this right here will be my response for that. All right, this is the rocket. It's on the floor right now, right? And then we have a little camera thing, little device right here. So of course, you're going to keep track of the rocket. Let's say it's the top, oh, just the picture. Don't worry about that. And of course, this is the first picture. And you do know that the distance from here to here is 4,000. The rocket is somewhere in the air now. So somewhere like this. Uh, it looks like a house, but you know what I'm going to give you? The fire. Anyway, and then this right here is the distance, of course. And then this thing is still right here. And the distance from here to here, it's still 4,000 feet because the rocket is going straight up. If the rocket is like going with an angle, then Maybe you will have to use law of sine, law of cosine, things like that. But anyway though, that's pretty much the deal. And let me just put that down right here. So as you can see, the things are changing is pretty much everything besides that. And we do have to care about the angle, right? So just keep that in mind. We do have to care about the angle, so keep that in mind. So let's do some labeling. Let's say this right here is x. And let's say this right here is y because the typical horizontal distance and so the vertical distance. But we do know x is equal to 4,000 and it's a constant. 
right? And because the question is talking about the angle, right, the angle of elevation, so we have to come up with an equation that involves x, y, and the angle theta. So let's go ahead and put down what we know. And then also, of course, let's put down what we want to know. This is the opposite, this is the adjacent, and this is the angle. So it was tangent theta being equal to y over x, right? And go back to the question, it says the rocket is going up and has a speed 600 feet per second. So we know that based on our labeling, we know dy dt is equal to 600. And we also know x is equal to 4,000, and this right here is just constant. So let me just you know, write that down right here. x is 4,000, it's always 4,000. We want to know how fast the angle is changing because you can see that originally the angle is like this. Technically, if I want to make the picture the same, if I line up here, I should do like this. It's a lot of fun to teach related rates and also min max because we can talk about stories along the way. It's actually more fun to talk about than integrations or just differentiation in my opinion. Right? All right, we want to get the d theta dt because remember angle changes over time as well. So this is what we want to know. At what instance though? At the moment that the racket is 3,000 feet. So we want to know this when y is equal to 3,000. I have a good news for you guys. Because x is always 4,000, right? It never changes. So you can put in 4,000 right here for the equation. So we can look at this as tangent theta equals y over 4,000. And then we can go ahead, just go, just go ahead and differentiate this with respect to time. And please, when you write this down, always put the DDT all the way in the front, never put it in the back because that's the, this is the correct notation, right? Anyway, tangent theta, remember your derivative, you get secant squared theta, but because theta changes over time as well, so you multiply by d theta dt. Now take this derivative right here. Well, this is, you don't need to use the quotient rule for this. This is the same as one over 4,000 times y. So you have the one over 4,000. The derivative of y is just dy dt. All right, good. Now, plugging the numbers, well, I will do the left hand side, I mean, we'll do the right hand side first because it's easier, because we know dy dt is equal to 600 feet per second. d theta dt, we don't know. Now, we have to figure out secant squared theta. You have two ways to do it. You can figure out what theta is, and then do the typical secant of whatever angle is and then square the result. You don't have to do it like that though. Keep in mind, y is equal to 3000. We haven't used this yet, right? When y is equal to 3000, let's look at what we have. If you look at this triangle, when y is equal to 3000, that's going to be right here, and x is 4000. If we have this side, which is the hypotenuse, then we'll be able to figure out secant of that angle. So let's go ahead and figure this out. Of course you know, three, four, five, but with thousand, right? So that should be pretty clear. And with this picture right here, we can figure out the secant theta, which is hypotenuse over adjacent. And technically it's just five over four. So we are going to just write down five over four, but don't forget we are going to square this. So for this, again, it's just because by looking at this triangle, secant theta is equal to 5,000 over 4,000, which is five over four. And the square tells you how to square that number. So that's how we got that. I'm going to just multiply by the reciprocal to the right hand side and then you guys do the fractions on your own. We get uh, d theta dt here. That's equal to, I'm going to put this over there. I'm not going to reduce anything. Pretty bad, but anyway. And I will do the reciprocal, which is going to be 
4 over 5 and then square that. Do the fractions on your own, or maybe use your calculator on your own. And uh, this right here will get 12 over 125, which is, a proc which is equal, this is actually a very nice decimal number, which is equal to 0 0.096. Radians per second. So that's it. 